nice to have you long and there's been quite a few things that have transpired since we uh we've been here but some great news we're actually like living on a cloud right now you know things are looking good donald trump won d t bringing down the house and you know it's gonna be really exciting but also kind of like this tumultuous period right now where forget it man every day is like the impossible odds because they're working at full speed to do everything they can to derail everything he has in mind and i think a big part of the reason why he's coming out with so many of these these things is to to really like scramble them because a lot of these people that he's putting in charge are wild cards like they have no idea what they're going to do and you know like it, it's not like trump to announce his plans and he's kept a, a lid on this for four years running up from 2020 to 2024 trump has been saying the same exact thing in interviews he hasn't been, he hasn't given anything away I was getting annoyed because this guy just comes on podcast and he keeps saying the same things. We're going to make America great again. The fake news. He's saying the same thing, you know, but it's like he's saying that because everything in his every fiber of his being was saying, do not say a word about what you have, what they have coming once you get in, you know, and seems like he got a little excited and it's almost like. It almost seems like a mistake for him to give so much of his plans away, 72, 73 days out. I mean, now it's, it's like, you know, 10 days less than that. I think we got like 62, 61 days, something like that, till he's in office. So it seems foolish for him to give away his plans because you know that they're doing everything they can to put a block up for every single one of these things he wants to do. But first and foremost is... They're looking to just eliminate and have him not even be a player anymore. If they can get rid of both him and J.D. Vance, then it, it all crumbles. His ticket, everything is gone. The only thing that it goes down to is Mitch McConnell. It goes to the Speaker of the House. At that point where you're the president-elect, the line of succession goes as far as the Speaker of the House. So Mitch McConnell would become the acting president, if it were to make it to January 20th and Trump and JD are gone, you know, that is what would end up happening. So you know that that's their first priority. They absolutely want that to happen. That is their number one thing. The number two is World War III. And the funny thing is, it doesn't even look like that will work unless there's nuclear weapons being fired prior to January 20th which I can almost promise you no country involved that has nuclear weapons except maybe Iran and North Korea that they do not want to get involved with a nuclear war. It's not good for anybody. The leaders of these countries know that, especially China, that has been dismantling the United States brick by brick for the past 60 years, really, and it has done so in accelerated fashion the past four years that's for sure we know now that the bidens have completely sold out we know biden is the big man we know a lot of things going on with the ukraine and china i mean the, there's money coming into this country and then these politicians are just doing whatever they want and they're just making money hand over fist with this shit and that, that's why all the the policies the, the everything that has gone on really the past 16 years is uh a result of that like we've been just getting taken advantage of the the highest bidder is the one that gets to dictate policy and we're not talking about within the u.s we're talking about foreign interests like there are buildings th this is tangential but there are buildings in new york city manhattan specifically just skyscrapers that there's no lights on in these things Nobody is renting these things, or nobody is living in them. They're being rented, and a lot of it is international money laundering. 
they're they're holding these rooms and they're able to use it as a way of funneling you know drug money whatever it might be into ruining this country because obviously they have no interest in doing anything that'll make things right like they're just looking to make money of course we would be doing that if we were like investing money in a foreign country we just want our money to be worth more and and to make us money so these people do not care about the situation going on in the states it's one of the contributing factors to the re reason things are getting out of control right now and i just think for sure now it seems to be commonplace but people are of the belief that you know they want to start some huge problem before trump gets in but i i don't think that that's going to be beneath trump to fix to be honest like i think it's going to be pretty simple and i'm sure he's making phone calls to already keep this stuff from happening but you do expect russia to flex i mean there's a reason why you know we're kind of the bad guy in this situation like we usually are in the international scene but you know with russia it's a long complex thing that's gone on like we we don't respect their history and nor do the does, does the united states respect the agreements that have gone on between us and russia russia has been very helpful toward us after the cold war you know i mean even before that it's, it's something that, you know, that they, they fought tooth and nail with, with Hitler. So anyway, they've always been our kind of, you know, rough and tumble ally, but they've been there for us and, and they tried to help us in, in unified things. But anyway, we can actually get a little bit of this from uh, some interesting video that kind of goes through all this. Six minutes. But we'll take a little deeper dive where this is explained more fully, the situation between Russia and Ukraine. This is not an attack by Putin on Ukraine in the way that we are told every day. This started in 1990, February 9th, 1990. James Baker III, our Secretary of State, said to Mikhail Gorbachev, NATO will not move one inch eastward if you agree to German unification, basically ending World War II. And uh, Gorbachev said that's very important. Yes, NATO doesn't move and we agree to German unification. The US then cheated on this already starting in 1994 when Clinton signed off on a basically a plan to expand NATO all the way to Ukraine. This is when the so-called neocons took power. And uh, Clinton was the first agent of this. And the expansion of NATO started in 1999 with Poland, Hungary, and Czech Republic. At that point, Russia didn't much care. There was no border other than with the Königsberg, but other than that, there was no direct threat. Then. Uh, the U.S. Uh, led the bombing of Serbia in 1999. That was bad, by the way, uh, because that was a use of NATO to bomb a European capital, Belgrade, 78 straight days to break the country apart. The Russians didn't like that very much. But Putin became president. They swallowed it. They complained. But uh, even Putin started out uh, pro-European, uh, pro-American, actually asked maybe we should join NATO uh, when there was still the idea of some kind of mutually respectful relationship. Then 9-11 came, then came uh, Afghanistan, and the Russians said, yeah, we'll support you. We understand to root out terror. But then came two other decisive actions. In 2002, the United States unilaterally walked out of the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. This was probably the most decisive event, never discussed in this context. But what it did was trigger the U.S. putting in missile systems in Eastern Europe that Russia views as a dire, direct threat. In 2004, five, we engaged in a soft, regime change operation in Ukraine. But in 2009, Yanukovych 
won the election and he became president in 2010 on the basis of neutrality for Ukraine. That calmed things down because the U.S. was pushing NATO, but the people of Ukraine on the opinion polls didn't even want to be in NATO. They knew that the country is divided between ethnic Ukrainian and ethnic Russian. What do we want with this? We want to stay away from your problems. So in February 22nd, 2014, the United States participated actively in the overthrow of Yanukovych, a typical U.S. regime change operation. Have no doubt about it. And the Russians did us a favor. They intercepted a really ugly call between Victoria Nuland, my colleague at Columbia University now, between her and uh, the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Piat, who's a senior State Department official till today. And they talked about regime change. They said, who's going to be the next government? All of this is to say, the U.S. then said, okay, now NATO's really going to enlarge. And Putin kept saying, stop, you promised no NATO enlargement. It's been, by the way, I forgot to mention, in 2004, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Bulgaria, Romania, Slovia, Slovakia, Slovenia, seven more countries in the not one inch eastward. And then, okay, it's a long story, but the U.S. kept rejecting the basic idea, don't expand NATO to Russia's border in a context where we're putting in goddamn missile systems after breaking a treaty. 2019, we walked out of the Intermediate Nuclear Force Treaty. On December 15, 2021, Putin put on the table a draft Russia-U.S. security agreement. You can find it online. The basis of it is no NATO enlargement. I called the White House that next week after that, begging them, take the negotiations. Putin's offered something, avoid this war. Oh, Jeff, there's not going to be a war. Announce that NATO's not going to enlarge. Oh, don't worry, NATO's not going to enlarge. I said, oh, you're going to have a war over something that's not going to happen? Why don't you announce them? And he said, no, no, our policy is an open door. This is Jake Sullivan. Our policy is an open door policy. Open door for NATO enlargement. That is under the category of bullshit, by the way. <laughs> you don't have your right to put your military bases anywhere you want and expect peace in this world. They turned down the negotiations. Then the special military operation started. And five days later, Zelensky says, OK, OK, neutrality. And then the United States and Britain said, no way. You guys fight on. We got your back. We don't have your front. You're all going to die. But we got your back as we kept pushing them into the front lines. That's 600,000 deaths now of Ukrainians since Boris Johnson flew to Kiev to tell them to be brave. So as you can see, I mean, it's broken down fairly simply right there. Like, you know, we were not supposed to do what we did. Russia drew a line and we continued to cross it. So we are where we are now by extenuating circumstance of our own stupidity. So it's our responsibility to set this right and make sure that this does not kick off into a third world war. Even though, I mean, by all standards, if this was an actual Republican in for the past four years, they would have been going crazy with the state of the world and what was happening, you know? It's just absolutely crazy. Maybe the only thing the old Democrats would have been okay with was the open borders. But even that, with all the illegals and everything, I mean, that would have never been part of the plan. I mean, what the hell is the destabilization of the entire West? You know, how is that a good thing? Obviously, these people are profiting off of it, so... You know, we've come to a point where the corruption in the West, the corruption everywhere in the world, if the West is corrupt this much, then the rest of the world is really 
most i would say you know a large majority of it is not doing too well you've got bukale and and naive i think that's his name i think india is doing pretty well as well they got some good good people in charge that care about their own people you know this is like i don't even know how the hell we've gotten to this point where it's something people have to be reminded of that like you need to have people running things and leaders that actually care about the people and not these ideological issues that really do nothing but like propagate the fall of rome you know like gender idea like who get when it comes to the point that this stuff becomes such a problem i mean is it worth even discussing at that length then like to to the degree where we're gonna have like well you know what discussion is fine we're not even doing that that is a major part of the problem but when it's like racism when you make racism a topic every day everything is about the color of somebody's skin oh we talk to these white people like you when you listen to the things happening on tv nowadays none of it makes sense like there are these people who were talking about racism that every fucking word out of their mouth is the color of somebody or an attributing characteristic to the the cosmetics of a person it, it it is so trivial at this day and age how people are not seeing through this stuff like what the hell are you talking about that racism is an issue when you're talking about the fucking race you're being racist explaining that there is racism and it's like you're the one with that objective look at everything i am not looking at you at the color of your skin the minute that you do something that starts to profile you as a category of that sure that's why we have stereotypes there are things that you know are based in in real experience whether they're right or wrong or shouldn't you know have the connotations they do that's another story entirely. That's just the fact of the history behind these things. We have associations with them, references to them. All of this is destructive. And I mean, it's first started, the first person to really talk about this was, at least publicly, you know, in a mainstream fashion, was George Carlin. I mean, you get rid of the ability to speak clearly and concisely and everything has to be defined and, oh, well, what's your interpretation of it? And I have my truth. and your truth and it's like yeah sure you might have your opinion but there is no your truth my truth you want to talk about a lived experience fine in the context of that maybe maybe that is so but still to have it be that you think other people will accept your truth that's the reason if you want to say my truth that it's your truth this pertains to you you might be the only one that believes this, and therefore it is an opinion held by you. So, to, to even have myself go into this topic, that like common sense needs to be explained, is, is absolutely crazy. And it really furthers everything about Marxism. That like, I am getting depressed by the idea that I have to express common sense to other human beings. That it's like me and you are the same. I have the same fucking brain as you do. You actually have probably a lot less brain damage because I have fucking lesions all over my brain and my lower spine. Spine, thankfully, is not making any thought come out of it. But my physical body fully fucking attacked by that aspect. But come on now. I mean, things need to be rationalized. You want to be the proponents of science and, you know none of it lines up where is the science on how you don't understand what a woman is and that there are differences no matter you can't change these things like it's just the dumbest point we've come to in like we're at two apexes of like human intelligence is somehow at its peak and fucking the stupidity is at a peak like people are losing their minds it really is crazy and I just want to go back to the fact that they're looking to eliminate Mr. DT. And, you know, we're moving toward World War III. I don't think they're going to be successful with that. And there's probably a lot more that they're going to have to figure out to get that done. I think they're going to turn their eyes somewhere else. They're not going to worry about starting World War III or some conflict with Russia or Ukraine to really get the pot 
going, that's where they're going to be looking to Iran. They're going to look to some other third world country that is very easy to get the fireworks fucking kicking. You know, I mean, these places like Africa, you know, uh, there's even more places in Europe that are on the brink right now of either war, civil war, destabil uh, internal destabilization. So, you know, there's a lot of people on people right now. And the elites are loving it because we're fighting. They're, they got no problems. They're profiting off all the fighting we're doing. So, you know what? That's where you got to keep your head down, man. You got to know what to involve yourself with. And the most important thing is to, to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, man. And that not only for yourself, but for everybody. Really, you know, just realize the opportunities that we have. And you have to work with those things, you know. Like right now, really the periods of chaos are actually of great growth in that sense. I mean, when you look at what just happened to crypto, you know, that there's a lot of there's a lot of benefits to chaos. It's it is a ladder. It is a ladder. And instead of having this slow ramp and uh, you know, the normal order of things, things can kind of get jumbled up. So, you know, got to take advantage of that and we need people on our end, people with the right minds to shoot up this ladder at a time like this and we're seeing that you know, that's what happens. The ladders have been gatekept by some pretty fucked up people, but they're starting to get changed out. And in this chaotic period, that's where a lot of things can start growing. You know, you burn down the forest, that's new life, baby. That's the way nature sees it. It's just a cycle. And that's some good nutrients for the soil. So you can learn a lot from things getting really roughed up. I think we're going to learn our, be our best and quickest lessons as humanity during times like these. We learned what the extreme right did. Hitler, even though that's a whole different story unto itself, where definitely a really bad side to Hitler, but there's a super patriotic and, you know, um, there was a reason he got into doing what he did, and he was the leader of Germany. You know, he had a very. Um, losing the word but you know nationalistic he was very nationalistic and he wanted good for his own people germany was turning into a cesspool it was becoming there was a lot of liberal ideas going on during that you know that were kind of destroying and rotting the whole europe and germany was at the center of that so hitler put a stop to that you know there was a lot of crazy things to his policies and things i disagree with but a lot of terrible shit he did but uh, fucking man went crazy not to say he wasn't crazy from the beginning but it, there's at least lessons to learn in that and we learned the ultimate lesson that you know the, the left and the globalists wanted us to learn which was that don't ever let the right get in power to that effect but no real lessons about the left and i think this is the lesson of the left for the world this is the the leftist hitler that we just seen the Biden Harris the Obama freaking you know run honestly even back to the Clintons it's but it was just a lot lot more it was slow footed back then so you barely noticed it but the last 16 years this this shit is honestly I don't know what the what the toll is what the death toll but it's it's millions just with covid it's millions the left has a lot of blood on their hands. They really do. And they want to talk about Hitler. They got something coming in the course of history because they are not going to be painted well. One of the first things that Obama said when the news of Trump winning the um, election was that he's scared for his legacy. And it's immediately, it is being uh, uncovered and attacked because there was something real recent that happened. I don't, I'm, I'm a little spotty on the details, so I don't want to go too much into that. But there was a lot of stuff they found that directly links Obama into into Russian collusion. That he was a direct authorizer of the Russian collusion hoax against Trump. So you know, there's a lot of info out there, and he doesn't like it, Mister Mister Obiesel. He's not 
he's not too happy with this. Which, sorry, buddy, but you destroyed this country. You got it kickstarted, baby, on high speed with a smile on your face. He is a great public figure. He he is one of the best statesmen around. Charming, beguiling. He is what they actually define as the Antichrist. Just with a tongue of gold, but intentions of pure shit for every single person. So, and then there was uh, photos, him of him getting fucking, him and this Asian lady. He's involved with child trafficking as well, so. Boop, 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 boop. Sorry, Obama, they're coming after you, my friend. But anyway, I hope you've all been great. Good news, hopefully, keep continue to come. There's a lot of very interesting things. I, I really can't wait. Like, I don't know, these people think that we're going to start to be upset when they start showing all these illegals getting uh, deported. <laughs> they came, my family, they take me away. No, everybody, the Americans are going to be clapping. Yeah, lock more of them up, take them out of here. Like, we're sick of this shit. So, I'm happy for what's about to come and what we're about to see. Unless we get some bad news, but I think it, I think we're we're still we got the the upper hand right now. So balls in our court. Got to get this uh, speaker of the house out. I don't I don't know if he if what's going on with that. These appointees and I think Mitch McConnell said he's not doing the recess appointments. This jackass. So we got to get Mitch out because this is the last hope they have. They get rid of Trump and JD. It's gonna be Mitch McConnell in charge. Fucking jackass. So. God bless. I hope you're all in the best spirits. Salute. Farewell. You all have a great one. We'll see you again next time.